In the annals of history, on the vast plains of the Soviet Union, a battle unfolded that would shake the very foundations of war. Tanks thundered across the battlefield, and heroes emerged from the haze of battle. This is the story of one man, Rudolf von Ribbentrop, and his fateful encounter on the Eastern Front. The year was 1943, and amidst the chaos, two formidable forces clashed with unyielding determination. On one side, the German 2nd SS Panzer Corps, led by the fearless Paul Hauser, prepared to face their Soviet adversaries. With meticulous planning, the Germans devised a strategy to strike at the heart of the Soviet positions in Prokhorovka. But they were not alone. The Soviet 5th Guards Tank Army, a behemoth of steel and firepower, stood in their path. With over 850 tanks at their disposal, they aimed to obliterate the German threat and protect their homeland from the encroaching invaders. And so, on that fateful day, the stage was set for a monumental clash. The German panzer divisions, led by Ribbentrop, prepared to face the fury of the Soviet onslaught. Little did they know, they were about to enter a battle that would forever be etched in the annals of military history. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to History at War, where we delve into the heart of the most pivotal moments in human conflict. Brace yourself for an unforgettable journey through the annals of history, where battles were fought and combat legends were forged. During the course of several days, a fierce clash occurred between Soviet and German tanks on the vast plains of the Soviet Union. Among the tank commanders was Rudolf von Ribbentrop, a junior company commander who saw significant action with the 1st SS Panzer Division, Leibstandarte near the town of Prokhorovka. The 2nd SS Panzer Corps, led by SS Senior Group Leader Paul Hauser, arrived in the vicinity of Prokhorovka on July 12, 1943 setting the stage for one of the most memorable tank battles of the Eastern Front and potentially the entire war. The German 2nd SS Panzer Corps, comprising the 1st, 2nd and 3rd SS Panzer Divisions, had devised plans to attack the Soviet positions in Prokhorovka. In response, the Soviets had also prepared counterattacks against the German forces near the town. The Soviet 5th Guards Tank Army, consisting of a staggering 850 tanks, was deployed to the area with the objective of launching a series of counterattacks along a 30-kilometer front. On July 12th, around 500 tanks and self-propelled guns from the Soviet 5th Guards Tank Army initiated their assault on the positions of the 2nd SS Panzer Corps. They attacked in two waves, with 430 tanks in the first wave and an additional 70 tanks in the second. Their mission was to neutralize the threat posed by the three German SS divisions. In the midst of this intense confrontation, 22-year-old Rudolf von Ribbentrop commanded the 6th Company SS Panzer Regiment 1. He faced off against the T-34 tanks of the 18th and 29th Tank Corps. As the Soviet tanks descended the slopes toward Prokhorovka, they carried soldiers from the 9th Guards Airborne Division on their hulls. The troops of the Leibstandarte Division were initially not scheduled to engage until later in the day. Many of them were fatigued from the previous week's fighting and were just beginning their day when the attack commenced. As the Soviet armor appeared, German outposts along the Corps' front line fired purple warning flares to signal a tank assault. After waking up beneath their Panzer IV tank numbered 605, von Ribbentrop and his crew observed the distant purple smoke. Recognizing it as a sign of a major attack, von Ribbentrop immediately ordered his company of seven Panzer IVs to follow him across a bridge spanning an anti-tank ditch. They dispersed on the lower slope of hill, 252.2. At the hill's crest, Joachim Piper's 3rd Panzer Grenadier Battalion of the 2nd SS Panzer Grenadier Regiment faced being overrun. Von Ribbentrop positioned his company and spotted a group of approximately 20 T-34s to his left, at a distance of 800 meters, ideal range for accurate gunnery. He commanded his company to open fire, and within minutes, several T-34 were set ablaze, eliminating the immediate threat without sustaining any return fire. As Ribbentrop's tanks maneuvered, they unexpectedly encountered Soviet tanks from the 31st and 32nd Tank Brigades of the 29th Tank Corps. Von Ribbentrop described the battle. About 150 to 200 meters in front of me, 15, then 30, then 40 tanks appeared. Finally, there were too many to count. The Soviet tanks firing on the move charged down the western slopes of Hill 252.2 and engaged the Panzer Company in a fierce tank battle. At that moment, von Ribbentrop's Panzer IVs, 
found themselves isolated and well ahead of the defending Panzergrenadier units of the Leibstandarte division. Von Ribbentrop immediately ordered his gunner to open fire while his driver, initially on the verge of fleeing, was kicked back into position. As the turret pivoted to the right, the first shell hit a target just 60 meters away. While preparing to pivot the turret again, the adjacent tank commanded by SS Junior squad leader Popke was hit by multiple Soviet shells and burst into flames. Popke managed to escape the inferno but succumbed to his wounds later on. With the first wave of Soviet tanks closing in on the Panzer IVs, another group followed closely behind. Wave after wave of tanks relentlessly crashed into the German line within a matter of minutes. German gunners fought back ferociously, knocking out Soviet tanks with each well-aimed shot. Von Ribbentrop and his crew continued to engage the enemy, destroying three or four T-34 at close range of less than 30 meters. Isolated, encircled, low on ammunition and fuel, Von Ribbentrop realized their only chance of survival was to break out of the encirclement and reach a more defensible position. Out of the original seven Panzer the Fours in Von Ribbentrop's company, only four remained operational after a grueling 30-minute engagement. Fully aware that their best chance of survival was to keep moving and reach friendly lines, Von Ribbentrop led the remaining Panzers across a wooden bridge. However, another group of T-34 ported by infantry was also seeking a way to cross the anti-tank ditch. If the Soviet forces succeeded in crossing the bridge, the positions held by the Leibstandarte division would be at risk of collapse. Von Ribbentrop and his men took cover behind the wrecks of destroyed T-34 while several POC guns, operated by Piper's men, were positioned on the other side of the anti-tank ravine. They patiently waited for the Soviets to fall into their ambush. When the pack guns opened fire, chaos erupted around the Panzer IVs, resulting in the destruction of several T-34. The Soviet tanks also attacked the 1st SS Panzer Artillery Regiment of the division, leading to the loss of some crews before the Soviet tanks themselves were destroyed by anti-tank teams. By noon, Hill 252.2 was back under German control. Von Ribbentrop's company had suffered heavy losses, with many experienced tankers losing their lives. Two Panzer IVs were completely destroyed, while the majority had minor damage or were immobilized. Although the Soviet 5th Guards Army and 5th Guards Tank Army possessed a significant numerical advantage, their lack of a proper plan allowed victory to slip away. Piper and von Ribbentrop's actions, breaking wave after wave of Soviet tanks, played a crucial role in the German defense. In a grueling three-hour battle, the 1st SS Panzer Regiment found themselves locked in combat with the advancing Soviet tanks. However, they managed to successfully repulse the enemy forces and emerged victorious. The German unit reported that they had destroyed approximately 62 Soviet tanks during the engagement, a significant blow to the enemy. Among the soldiers who played a crucial role in this battle was von Ribbentrop, a 22-year-old. His exceptional skill and bravery on the battlefield earned him great recognition. In particular, he was credited with personally knocking out 14 of the Soviet tanks, showcasing his proficiency in armored warfare. As a result of his remarkable actions at Prokhorovka, Von Ribbentrop was awarded the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross. This prestigious honor was reserved for individuals who displayed extraordinary courage and exceptional military prowess. It was a testament to his outstanding performance and the vital contribution he made to the German forces during the battle. Reflecting on the events after the war, Von Ribbentrop shared his perspective in an interview. He revealed that he believed the main reason for his survival that day was the absence of a commander in the Soviet T-34 tanks at the time. This absence of leadership within the enemy ranks likely contributed to their diminished effectiveness and allowed the German forces to gain an advantage. Furthermore, von Ribbentrop attributed the victory at Prokhorovka to the superb education and leadership provided to the German soldiers. The rigorous training and strategic guidance they received played a significant role in their ability to overcome the enemy forces and achieve success on the battlefield. Overall, the battle at Prokhorovka showcased the resilience and skill of the 1st SS Panzer Regiment, with von Ribbentrop emerging as a standout figure for his exceptional performance. Their triumph in the face of adversity serves as a testament to the impact of effective leadership, training, and individual acts of bravery in the theater of war. That brings us to a close today. Thank you for joining us on this journey through history. If you enjoyed this video and want to support the channel, make sure to check out our Patreon, where you can gain access to exclusive content and behind-the-scenes updates. We also have an active community on Instagram, 
so be sure to follow us there for more fascinating historical facts and discussions. And don't forget to become a member of our YouTube channel to unlock special perks and join a community of fellow history enthusiasts. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to all our patrons, Instagram followers, and YouTube members. See you guys soon.